Hey, what's this? It's called snow. We get a lot of snow up around here. Up here in upstate New York, we get maybe 100 inches of snow per year. Sometimes we get big blasts coming off of Lake Ontario. We might get uh, two feet of snow in a big storm. So we don't want that piling up on our heat pump, right? This is a um, an extreme cold weather heat pump, good down to 13 below Fahrenheit. And we don't want to have to come out here in the middle of a, a freezing rainstorm or a snowstorm and try to clear this thing off. So we have this little hut built around it and it's fairly easy to make. All it takes is some PVC pipe, uh, a few connectors, some uh, three-way corners, some couplers, and some standard metal roofing. Now the uh, unit here uses 22 and a half degree couplers. You can get uh, shallower ones, 11 and a quarter. Uh, 45s are probably a little bit too much. You can also just use 90s at the corners instead of using those three ways, in which case you could sort of manually rotate it to whatever angle you want. I kind of like this version because this way the PVC pipe goes right to the end. The metal uh, on the top is uh, standard width. It's about three feet. So you can only get certain widths out of this. You can't get any width you want because of the overlap that you're going to use. Um, this one's about six feet wide, smidge over six feet wide. It's probably more than you really need. Um, but I had the space and I decided to be kind of conservative with it. Um, if you have a very windy area, you might want to use something this wide. Um, otherwise, you could probably chop a foot or two off uh, this whole thing. It's about four feet deep, and again, depending on the location, you might be able to uh, make that a little bit, uh, a little bit more conservative, or um, however your space fits. Okay, so we're going to show you how to do this, and really, tools. All it's going to take uh, is a hacksaw. Uh, if you have a chop saw, that's great, but a hacksaw will work, and uh, a drill. And really, that's about it. Let's start. Okay, so here's one of our new outdoor units. Uh, this is an LG Red Series, go down to 13 below. Um, so the first thing we have to do here is figure out the spacing that we need. Now this unit is about 15, 16 inches from the house, so we have plenty of space behind. Uh, we just have to figure out what we need in terms of the width, the overlap, um, and the height. Now this one's a little bit more challenging than the other one we saw uh, on the other side of the house because the ground on this is not level. The uh, unit itself has been leveled, but as you look off to the right, you can see the ground is sloping away. So we're gonna have to do some little asymmetry there on the legs. Okay, so what I've got here is the sheet metal roofing and one of the issues is you can't just make any width that you want. This comes in a three foot width. Each one of those major sections is about nine inches. So if you want everything to line up and you don't want to uh, have to cut this thing lengthwise, you're going to have to come up with some multiple of nine inches basically. And what I'm looking at here is a, a total width of uh, about 55 inches. And what I've done is I've created the top frame for this. It's just sitting on top. And you can see that there's uh, just four pieces. They're <clears throat> a little shy of uh, four feet in depth and um, a little shy of 55 because we have to, of course, take up the, the spacing of um, the, the three-way corners. Okay, so you'll notice there's a little bit of extra space on the side, okay, which... I'm going to take that and sort of fold it over so I don't have a sharp edge just sitting out there that you might get banged into. Now what's going to happen is uh, these lengths are 8 feet for the, for the metal. So I'm just going to make two cuts, make two four-footers, and that'll fit um, on the top just nice. And then in each of these three ways is going to go one of these little guys. These are the 11 and a quarter inch. Uh, little um, couplers that will fit in there to give us a little bit of an angle. Okay, now um, we're going to go and mock up the frame to make sure everything fits right. In other words, on site, and then we'll glue everything together and stick on the top. Okay, here we are on the other side of the house with uh, the other matching unit. 
and I've mocked up the frame for this guy. And uh, I'm on a little wide angle, so some of these angles look a little weird, but it is relatively square. It's not glued up yet, but uh, you can see in the corners, right, if you look right here, you can see the way that that um, 11 and a quarter inch elbow, excuse me, 11 and a quarter degree elbow uh, does its thing. Now you could get rid of the three-way and instead put a T there on top and then on the piece that's coming out towards the camera, uh, it's kind of across the front and out uh, towards the right side, you could put a 90 degree elbow going down and then you could make any angle you want. Um, I kind of like this way. I think it's a little cleaner and um, you also have the, the PVC right to the edge, which is good. So, we have plenty of space over here. The clearance to the top of the unit is about a foot. So we have about a foot above. Um, we have plenty of space behind it, obviously. And in the front, uh, we have about 20 inches of essential overhang. On either side of it, we have um, about a foot. Okay, so we have about a foot on either side. So this should, give us a pretty nice protection. You know, when we get um, some snow coming down here, uh, it's not perfect, obviously, but, uh, you know, we do want to keep things open. Okay, so now, uh, once we're satisfied that everything is, is uh, you know, right-sized, we can glue everything together and put on the top. One minor point, and that is um, looking at the base, right, um, I don't affix these. In other words, I don't put in you know, some kind of, uh, you know, cement base or something like that to stick them in the ground, because I want to be able to move these. I want to be able to take them off to make it a little easier for any kind of maintenance on the unit. So what I do, if you look in the unit far in the back corner here, you'll notice there is a coupler at the base. Okay, so what I do is I take a little piece of pipe, um, cut it maybe a foot long or so, put a coupler at the top, glue that in place, pound that into the ground, in the appropriate location. And then I put a little um, lubricant inside that, and then these four legs just go inside. Each one has, or will have, one of those sort of receivers, and then I can sort of line those up nice, you know, get them level as need be, um, and then just sort of friction fit those things into place. Okay, now I haven't had any problem with wind. Um, they, they hold pretty well, and this way, uh, should should we have to do any kind of uh, maintenance, you know, we can just kind of tap those corners, pop the whole thing up. Two people can pick this up, piece of cake, and just move it out of the way. Okay, over here we have one of the frames completed, so you can see the way the uh, corners are combined with those little uh, 11 and a quarter degree elbows. And then in the center, there are a couple of receivers for the down pipes that will hold this. So those get pounded into the ground. And here is uh, that same thing flipped over, except we have the sheet roof on it, overlapped by one piece. So all this needs right now is to get screwed into place. And then we'll glue in the four legs, put this in place after pounding in the receivers, and we'll be done. Here is one of the completed units. You can see the receivers for the upright posts at the bottom. And here's a view from up top. Here is the other unit. You might notice that this is slightly off-center. It's done that way on purpose because this makes the fan a little closer to the center and the intakes are in the back and on the left side, so this way they get a little bit more protection.